get you to change places with Representative Hub. You know how to do this, this thing got. Representative Nancy Tate, representing House District 27 and the House pro life Caucus. Not only do I represent my House District, I also represent women in Kentucky. Thank you for joining us today. We're here this morning as pro-life legislators to address a massive misinformation campaign against the, the Yes for Life Constitutional Amendment Number 2, an amendment that passed the Kentucky House on February 25th, 2021, by a margin of 76 to 20. It also passed the Senate by a margin of 32 to 6. This was a bipartisan effort by both Democrats and Republicans voting for this in the House and the Senate. Amendment 2 simply says, to protect life, nothing in the Constitution shall be construed to secure or protect a right to abortion or require the funding of abortion. The reason this amendment is so important is because many of us anticipated the federal government turning this issue back to the states. That was the case with the U.S. Supreme Court Dobbs ruling back on June 24th. This amendment makes it clear that there is no right to an abortion under the Kentucky Constitution. Practically speaking, this means state judges and will keep state judges in their lane of interpreting the law and not inventing new laws and new rights that the Constitution does not speak of. It also keeps taxpayer dollars from being used to fund abortions in the Commonwealth. The reality of the state level judges blocking state legislation was underscored on July 22nd when Louisville Circuit Judge Mitch Mitchell Perry blocked Kentucky's Human Life Protection Act. This allowed abortions to continue despite the duly enacted laws restricting abortions in the Commonwealth. We believe in the separation of powers between the three branches of government. Our role as lawmakers is to listen to our constituents, respond to their concerns, and craft laws accordingly. We are accountable to them. Judges, on the other hand, are generally insulated from voters and from public opinion. A yes vote on Constitutional Amendment number two protects Kentucky's voters' self-determination to create their own laws, not judges. A yes vote would essentially stop a state level Roe versus Wade. This is a massive information campaign that is misrepresenting the intent of this amendment and scaring Kentucky's women. The leading group opposed to the amendment Protect Kentucky Access, the website says, don't let politicians restrict your freedom. A constitutional amendment will be on the ballot November 8th that will outlaw abortions in all cases with no exceptions. Kentuckys, Kentuckians should be in charge of private medical decisions, not politicians. This amendment is a clear example of extreme politicians going too far if constitutional amendment number two passes. It would allow government overreach into our personal medical decisions. This is false and misleading. The amendment does not allow abortions or does not outlaw abortions. It does not outlaw abortions in all cases. Under current Kentucky law, abortion is legal if necessary to preserve the life and the health of a pregnant woman with a complicated pregnancy. Passage of amendment number two will not change this prohibition. According to one mailer sent out from protest Kentucky Access, amendment number two in Kentucky is government overreach, which will ban all abortions, even in cases of rape, incest, and when the mother's life is at risk. Beat the ban protects Kentucky women. Again, this is false. As it, I just stated, it does not ban all abortions. There is an exception to preserve the life and the health of a pregnant woman. 
Regarding difficult yet rare cases of sexual assault, this amendment does not address those. This legislator can address abortion exceptions at any time that it is in session. Amendment number two does it what does amendment what amendment number two does is it makes clear that a judge will not do that for us. Protect Kentucky Access is flooding Kentucky Airways with ads meant to misinform and scare women. We'd like to bring attention to who they are and where they're getting their money. The campaign manager for Protect Kentucky Access is from Kansas and led the effort to defeat their constitutional amendment. This group has poured at least $3 million into Kentucky and that number is increasing by the day. So where's their funding coming from? 83% of it has come from out-of-state donors, including former New York Mayor Michael Bloomberg, who donated $250,000, and donors from, donors from New York and California. The ACLU has contributed $400,000, and Planned Parenthood affiliates from across the nation have contributed $964,000 in fact, 45% of Protect Kentucky Access donations have come from the ACLU and Planned Parenthood. So why would these outside groups spend so much money to influence policy in the Commonwealth? The bottom line is that abortion is a lucrative business. Planned Parenthood profits off of performing abortions. According to their 2020-2021 annual report, they perform 383,000 460 abortions. If the low end of $500 per abortion is calculated, Planned Parenthood raked in at least $191,730,000 from abortions. If they can defeat the amendment and with a favorable judicial ruling, they could set up abortion centers across the Commonwealth to service surrounding states that have strictly regulated abortions on demand. Tennessee, Indiana, West Virginia, Ohio, and Missouri all have significant abortion rulings and no vote would make Kentucky an abortion mecca for this region of the nation. One of the things I wanna circle back around because I cannot read my notes, is that's $191 million that Kentucky Planned Parenthood has raked in just from abortions right. in the one year time frame. A yes vote protects Kentucky voters' self-determination to create their own laws. A yes vote prevents judges from inventing abortion rights in our Constitution. A yes vote keeps out of state interests from exploiting us. A yes vote keeps public tax dollars from being used for abortion. As elected representatives in the Kentucky legislature, we put our reputation on the line to protect the process, the rule of law, and the voice of the people. We are asking Kentucky voters to do the same with the yes vote on November 8th for constitutional amendment number two. Thank you. And at this time, I would welcome my colleagues to speak as well. Thank you. Westerfield State Senator for the 3rd Senate District. Uh, I, I echo all the, the sentiments you just heard from uh, our pro-life caucus chair, Nancy Tate. Uh, she laid out the argument pretty well. When the Supreme Court issued its Dobbs opinion back in June and it reversed uh, the, the precedent of Roe and Casey, it did what should have been done back in 1973, which was put the decision about this public policy in the hands of public policy makers. That's what was done by the Dobbs decision, and then your legislature last year passed this amendment to put that issue before the voters. It's not a question about whether abortion should be allowed or not. It's not a question about that at all. It's not a question about the morality or not. It's a question about whether or not our Constitution says that it's a right or not. This amendment does not ban abortion. If it did, I'd vote for it, and I suspect many of my colleagues behind me would do the same, but this amendment doesn't do that. Not at all. This amendment does exactly what you just heard Representative Tate says it does. If passed, it would stop our court from enacting its own Roe or Casey case right here in the Commonwealth, something that has 
been a shadow over America for the last 49 years, resulting in tens of millions of deaths of unborn children in our country. Kentucky has too many of its own in that camp. We need to make sure that we pass an amendment to prevent our Supreme Court. And I'll remind you and remind the folks that are watching and reading your coverage after this press conference, there's a case sitting before our Supreme Court today. And with the decision in Dobbs, a lot of the other cases, we've passed, say, about a dozen pro-life laws, 13 pro-life laws in the last sure. several years since the Republicans took the majority. Though I'll, I do want to highlight the fact, and again, another uh, invalid or, or false statement from the opposition, this is a bipartisan effort. It's not just a Republican effort. Republicans and Democrats alike support protecting unborn life, and they have supported each and every one of the amendment or bills that we've passed, including this amendment. But of those 13 laws that we've passed, most of them, if not all, have been challenged at one point in federal court. Those challenges are going to start coming to state court now in the, in the wake of Dobbs. This question needs to be solved, and the, and the voters need to raise their voice and say that this is something that's not in our Constitution, because, folks, it is not. That doesn't mean the legislature can't then enact policies to restrict or, hopefully not, expand abortion access down the road. But that's the role of the policymaking body in government in Kentucky. That's right. It's not the role of state court judges, regardless of how high they are on the bench. It's not their job to create law. It's not their job to fabricate it out of whole cloth, as our Supreme Court did in 73 and again in 92. Uh, it's the job of policymakers. And in this regard, we wanted to have the voters say their say here, have their say here, and make this a part of our Constitution. A yes vote does not ban abortion. It does not if affect uh, routine uh, health care for women. It does not affect uh, IVF or infertility care. As an adoptive father and someone who has struggled with unexplained infertility for all 13 years of my marriage, I can attest that I'm not concerned about access to infertility care or treatment because of this amendment or anything else. This is an issue that voters need to stand up and vote yes on and say no to all of the misinformation, falsehoods, deceit, and deceptions coming through in the many millions of dollars, most of which from out of state, out of state activist groups and organizations and individual donors and so forth from around the country, trying to confuse and scare voters into thinking this amendment does things it simply does not do. I'd ask the voters to vote yes on Amendment 2, not just because of where you stand on abortion, but because of the constitutional question. This is not a question for judges. It's a question for your policymakers. Would you get to elect every other year and every four years in the Senate? If you don't like the policies that we enact, as Nancy said, hold us accountable. Change your vote. Vote for somebody else. In the meantime, make sure that that question, though, lies with policymakers in Kentucky and not judges. Thank you all so much. Good morning. I'm State Representative Kim King, serving Kentucky's 55th House District. In addition to confirming 100% the clarifications of my colleagues, I also wanted to encourage and remind uh, voters to turn the page of their ballot. Ballots all across the Commonwealth will be very lengthy this fall, and I don't want you to miss the opportunity to vote yes on constitutional amendment number two. Thank you. I'll also remind you and remind your viewers that a straight ticket will not answer the question on this constitutional, on either of the two constitutional amendments. I would also like to add that um, I think I've shared with uh, many times in this, in the rooms and committee rooms and uh, on, you know, KET and other opportunities that my husband and I actually, I've had three miscarriages. And so as the co-sponsor of many of these pro-life bills, and as the sponsor of one House Bill 3 this year, I can speak with confidence that as a woman who has had three miscarriages, there is no concern from my perspective about the language that we as lawmakers have enacted. There are provisions specifically stating in the current KRS and the current laws that the woman's life will always be taken into consideration for physical health issues. So that is just absolutely a scare tactic by the donors from out of state in order to influence women in Kentucky. And I am so sad about that. We have a few minutes, so we can take a couple questions if you would like. Representative Tate, you mentioned the, uh, all of your just mentioned the misinformation you're concerned about. What about uh, the other side coming from Yes for Life? There have been some disputes about the television ad they aired 
that says radical out-of-state activists want to spend your tax dollars on late-term abortions even up to the moment of birth. Is there any evidence for that? It's been skewed as false and misleading. Well, I think we can look across the nation. We can look at the conversations that are taking place in other states where Planned Parenthood and the ACLU is also providing money and finding that to be a lucrative business. As a matter of fact, we can look at the at Washington, D.C., and we can see where infanticide, infanticide is being pushed, including infanticide up to 28 days after birth. So I think that, that you know, while we can call that misinformation, I think we can actually point to evidence where that's, that's absolutely true. I, I, don't, I would argue that that's exactly what they want. And without this protection in place, that's the policy that they're going to fight for. They're going to they're going to rely on our Supreme Court doing what the U.S. Supreme Court did 49 years ago. And with that argument in place, that's exactly the kind of world they want to shoot for. And you've seen uh, Democrats uh, and, and pro-choice uh, folks at all levels of government, from the national level on down, make the case that that's what they want. When they talked about codifying Roe, their bill didn't even do that. It went seriously extreme a position that a small fraction of Americans hold, that's the kind of America they want. I don't think it's at all inaccurate or misleading to say that that's the future they're, that they're going for. And, this, and to talk about how that this is some sort of misleading ad, I don't think it's misleading at all. I think if you play the tape to the end, that's the, that's the result that they want to see. And I think as lawmakers, one of our responsibilities is to consider, and all of us consider, is what do we want Kentucky to look like? And, you know, Kentucky has been proven to be a pro-life state. I think you can look at my colleagues and the representation and the composition of the House and the Senate to understand that. We are one of the most pro-life legislative assemblies that has ever been in existence at the Commonwealth of Kentucky. So we represent Kentucky and the pro-life Kentucky. What does your internal polling show on, on the question, and, and what's your message to the voters about that possible Welcome. Sure, and, and I will tell you that I, I have not been privy to any of the polling information. Is there a certain amount of urgency, though, that uh, in, in the message that you have for voters? Oh, absolutely. Well, because whether we're ready or not, either side, right, the pro or the con, November 8th is going to happen. And so the sense of urgency is November 8th, but we also want to make sure that we dispute the disinformation that's being communicated. And so, you know, we are actually being called liars and that we don't care about women in Kentucky. And I think that you can look, and all of you can look at, because those of you that have been involved, you can look at the, the legislation that we passed and you can understand that that is absolutely false. You know, during the 2021 session, we passed over 40 pro-life, pro-family, pro-women pieces of legislation. I'm not as um, in tune with 2022, the 2022 session, which I should be, but I, don't, I apologize for not being, but we passed over 40 pieces language that supported women and their families and I'm proud of that uh, are you confident it's gonna pass or are you worried that it might not um, well there's always concern but I'm absolutely confident that Kentucky will pull forth and demonstrate that we are a pro-life Kentucky and that we understand what is at stake here and that we will not be swayed by the money that's pouring in from out of state I mean, we know what we want Kentucky to look like, and you can tell by the representation, the honest representation that's standing behind me, and I'm proud of this body. To go Thank off you. of what Deb asked about the misinformation in the Yes for Life campaign, using taxpayer-funded dollars to fund late-term abortions up to the moment of birth, it's it's in law, codified in law right now, I believe, as part of House Bill 3 that you were the lead sponsor of this past session that makes it illegal to use taxpayer money to pay for abortions. I was on the phone with an OBGYN yesterday who disputed the claim, and I've talked to many OBGYNs who've said that the idea of late-term abortion up to the moment of birth is an extreme misnomer, a complete falsehood are the words that he used. So I guess, what is the response to that? Uh, because we're, we're here talking about the misinformation and about I think I, Kentucky access. I sincerely appreciate that question, absolutely, and I appreciate all the questions. Going back to what Senator Westerfield said, since 2016, there have been 13 pieces of language that have been passed, pro-life pieces of language that have been passed, be it the heartbeat bill, be it the dismemberment, be it the, the bill that we just passed this past session. Um, but most of them have been tied up in, in, in courts. They've all been tied up in the courts. Most of them have been tied up in the court system. So therefore, as Senator Westerfield has stated, is that if this constitutional amendment number two 
is not passed, the opportunity is present that the, our judges, our Kentucky Supreme Court justices, will legislate from the bench. And then therefore, we will have our own version of Roe versus Wade here in Kentucky. I'll add that, and, and Alex, you and I had a conversation last week. We, we've seen information that indicates that, that public dollars that have flowed to the University of Louisville through their partnership with EMW have actually been used since before 17 and after 17 for the provision of abortion services at the NW Clinic. So the, the argument that public dollars are gonna find their way to provide this is not a stretch at all. I don't think it's a falsehood at all. I think it's a very real threat, threat and a risk, particularly if the amendment fails, because then our courts are fine and free to fashion the sort of judicially created solution that the Supreme Court did in 73. I think that's the risk here, and that's why that's in that act. And one of the reasons why we felt the urgency to pass that, you know, to, to insert our own version of the Hot Amendment in House Bill 3 was because we are aware that there's approximately $530 million that are being spent with Planned Parenthood on an annual basis through the federal and state Medicaid program. But not in Kentucky. In Kentucky, they're potentially because they're passed through dollars. And just as Senator Westerfield stated, University of Louisville is a state university. And so therefore, we are sending millions of our taxpayer dollars to the University of Louisville, who is providing the medical staff for the EMW clinic. So there's the perfect example of how this is happening. And we're very disappointed in that. But now I will state the University of Louisville is actively working to resolve that and they have broken the contract with the EMW clinic. And I am proud of that. You also mentioned that uh, it should be up to policymakers on any exemptions or changes, but yet this body has uh, consistently rejected any kind of exemptions in most of the abortion legislation passed in recent years. Is there any belief to think that would change? Um, well, I, I, I don't it. think that's accurate. I don't, I don't think the premise is, is accurate at all. I don't think the, the trigger law that we passed has an exemption in it. For a medical emergency. Well, we have exemptions and exceptions in a lot of the bills, if not every one of the 13 bills that we've passed. Um, and I can't say I'm familiar with all, all of them. But, but this body has those uh, throughout all the bills. And I expect if you were to poll and ask all 138 legislators, you'd find a majority of them support some form of exception. I think you ought to, all of you, uh, ask where all of 138 of us are. I'm, I'm happy to answer that question for myself. I can't speak for the other 137. But I think if we're going to talk about that, let's make sure we know where everybody is, including those who want this amendment to fail. Let's ask where they are. And if they're for abortion up to the moment of birth, God forbid, they need to own that just like all the rest of us own the positions that we have. Uh, I think that's a fair question. It's a question none of you are asking the 138 of us, at least not that I've seen. I encourage all of you to poll us all. Ask us. And make a stand and tell us where we are. I'm not afraid to tell you where I am. I'm not sure everybody else is going to say the same especially on the pro-choice side, especially 12 days before election day. But do it, see where they are. Do you all support exemptions that are beyond just for medical emergencies? Are you asking Whitney or are you asking the caucus? Anybody who wants to say. I don't support exceptions. As I've talked about, God God made each of us in his, his image. Uh, he knew us before he formed us in the womb. This is a, a religious and faith question for me, and I don't believe that we have the right to kill an innocent life God created. Unfortunately, we have to cut this off, but I want to respond to that as well. Some of my best friends were conceived from rape and incest, and it absolutely breaks their heart when they hear from the, a public position that their life is not valued. Their life is valued, because I will reflect what Senator Westerfield said. We are all created in God's image. Thank you all very much.